Hi everyone, it's Kristen from Swagger Magazine and we are joined by the incredible and talented Richard Harmon today. How's it going? It's going well. That was a very nice introduction. Thank you. No problem. We're so happy to have you. Now, I wanted to talk to you about Gen Zeros, which is the first ever live action NFT project. Very, very unique project. Super, super current to what's going on right now. What can you tell me about your character and this unique project? For sure. I mean, you you nailed it right there that it's completely unique. Uh, when they kind of described it to me, it, it took me a minute to kind of wrap my head around even what they were, what they meant. But rest assured, they knew what they were talking about. And it's been a ton of fun for me. My character Vigo is, uh, he's right up there with a bunch of the characters I play. He's an absolute psychopath who's just a, a warmonger and he's, he's out of his mind. And those for me are the most fun characters to play. So I've had a really, really fun time playing. That's amazing. Now, when you first heard about this project, what made you kind of want to be a part of it, aside from the fact that you like playing characters like him? Did the kind of NFT Web3 element intrigue you? It definitely intrigued me. I think one of the main reasons I did it was the people that were involved. Um, I've known Matt and Jeremy who wrote it uh, for years. We've worked together many times. I love bringing their words to, to the screen in, in any form that we've ever done. And we've worked on Van Helsing together, Continuum together. And I'll, I, I've always said I'll work with them until the day that I die. I absolutely adore working for them. And I've known Alex Ponovic, who's one of the other leads in it for years. Bethany Brown, I did. I worked on The 100 with. There's so many people that I know on the show, and I just thought what an incredible experience to just be able to do something so new, like you said, and unique, and also be able to do it with friends. I mean, how often do you get get to do that? Absolutely. And now tell me, so viewers can watch this project online, is that correct? And then they can also become a part of the community. I heard there's utility involved. You can yes, and we yeah. definitely recommend being part of the the community. And they do so much fun stuff on there. Our, the the team behind the show is just doing so many amazing things. It's a ton of fun. That's amazing. Now, do you think that the world of entertainment and NFTs, Web three, is going to continue to collide in the future? Do you think this is just the beginning? I think it's absolutely inevitable, and I, I'm I'm kind of glad to be on the the ground floor, so to speak, you know, it's um, entertainment changes constantly. It always has and it always will. It's a very adaptable uh, thing and everyone needs entertainment. We all do. It's, you know, it's one of the things that make life worth living, uh, apart from many episodes, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I have to say that it's probably inevitable that it continues to collide in the future. That's amazing. Now, I heard that you like to create playlists to get in character. I do. Yes. So what kind of playlist did you make for Vigo for this project? Oh, God. I mean, a lot of like very angry, like aggressive type stuff. It's not even the type of stuff that I would usually listen to. But uh, for Vigo, it seemed right. Kind of like a metal rock type. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Just a little bit of sad stuff, because I think deep down inside, I'm sure he's just, you know, a sad, lonely boy, like they all are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, was acting always your dream, always on the horizon for you? How did you kind of fall into that world? Um, well, my family is in is in the film business. Uh, they have been my whole life, so I think that was a big... I played a big part of it, that I grew up around film people, and, you know, when you get to know film people, there's really... To me, I think when you grow up around them, there's really no other type of person that you can really be around. I was kind of ruined for for every other type of person. So yeah. I think, again, it was inevitable in that sense that I got into it. Not that they even wanted me to get into acting. Um, yeah, I think it was about... I started when I was 10, and I kind of didn't know if I was going to do that for a long time. I didn't think there was any chance of me actually having the success that I've had, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um yeah, and it just sort of worked out, and I love it honestly more than more than anything in the world. I love my job. That's amazing. There's nothing better in this world than getting to do what you love to do. And so I that do. is amazing. I'm very, very lucky. It's the reason you get up in the morning. Absolutely. Now, I heard that your dream role, I don't know if this is still relevant, so we'll see. I heard that it was to play Ebenezer Scrooge. Is that, that true? Is- Yes, that is that is absolutely my dream role. I think it's the it's the most perfect character arc. I mean, you get to do everything with that character in in, in one foul swoop. But I, I would be worried to play it because I believe 
Alistair Sim did it perfectly in 1951, I believe. And I don't, I don't know if that could ever be touched. I think that might be the best performance of all time. So if you haven't seen it, go see it. I have not seen that one. So actually, maybe I have. I, I've, I've seen a couple have, versions. You might have never known you've seen it. That's the thing. Yeah. No, that's that's super cool. Um, I could totally see you playing that character, by the way. So Rachel. you <laughs> you never know. We can manifest that for you. Yeah. You've been so a part of so many projects, The Killing, Continuum, The 100. How was it, um, how have those experiences changed your life and really shaped you as an actor, shaping your craft? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I'll speak to each one of those individually, actually. The Killing um, was an incredible experience for me. I had never done something of that kind of level before, that's for sure. And it definitely got me into a lot of more rooms than I was in before I did The Killing. And to work with such amazing actors like Mary Enos and, and, and Joel Kinnaman and all them, and even the great young actors they had on that show too, it really helped me understand what it took to be better and kind of set me on a path of, of a lot of harder work than I think I, I used to do. Uh, so it was very good for that. Continuum. A uh, big reason I got continuous was because they had seen me in The Killing, so that's kind of another room that, like I mentioned, The Killing got me into. Uh, that show was just incredible. That was the beginning of me being able to test myself as an actor and get opportunities to try things and take risks. So that show completely changed me in that sense that I think I became a much better actor after Continuum. And what an incredible story and incredible people. The 100 was the biggest life-changing experience I've ever had in my life. Honestly, my life is... It doesn't even resemble itself uh, from before the hundred. So to Jason Rothenberg and everybody on that show, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. honestly, God changed my life forever, um, and I couldn't be more grateful. And what an inc incredible character to play. He was, might be my favorite of all time, John Murphy. That's amazing. Now you were on that show for seven years. Seven years. So do you have any memorable moments that stand out for you? Could be about the character it could just be with your cast. Yeah, it's tough because it was, I mean, the, the memories are endless when you spend seven years there with the with, with people and, and some people coming in, some people going out, losing friends that, you know, were with you so close, but then they would, you know, they'd die in the season and then you you lose them, which is yeah. sad in its own way. But of course, you know, that's it's fine. They're, they're still alive. A memorable moment. Uh, it was the day that I got to, I, was, I didn't start the show as a, as a lead and then they upped me to being a series lead in season three and I think my first day on set as a series regular was um, a little emotional. It, it, meant, Absolutely. It, it meant a lot to me when I got to step on set and I think everybody knew that it meant a lot to me and it was, it was pretty cool. It was really That's cool. amazing. I love that. Um, I heard that you're also a horror, horror movie fan. Massively. Okay. I just watched one last night. Perfect. So you are my people then because yeah. I am a huge horror movie gal. Oh, and yeah. I wanted to ask you, you're in Trick or Treat. You have a little role in Trick or Treat. That oh. is an iconic movie. Yeah, so yeah. how does it feel to have been part of something like that? And tell me what your favorite horror movie is. Oh, sure. I mean, being a part of Trick or Treat actually was, was more uh, monumental for me than probably a lot of people realize. I was going to quit acting um, when I was 15. And then I was like, well, I'll do one last edition. And then I booked a different job. And I was like, okay, one more one. And then I booked that job and things just started working out. But I was still dead set that I'm like, I'm not going to make a career out of this. I don't think that I have what it takes, really. And eventually I booked Trick or Treat. And that was the first movie that I really felt like part of the family on that set. And Mike Doherty did such a great, great job with that movie. It was completely very immersive. I think we used like 12,000 bags of dead leaves and like 15,000 pumpkins or something on that movie. It was pretty wild. Nothing fake, all the real stuff. And uh, by the end of that, I just went, there's no, absolutely no way I could quit this. It means the world to me and that that movie helped me realize that so Trick or Treat was a massive massive thing and seminal moment for me in my life uh, my favorite horror movie that's so hard to choose there's so many Trick or Treat would be up there I do love it a lot I would say I'm gonna have to go Halloween 1 maybe no 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 Halloween 3 Season of the Witch really people hate it I love it <laughs> I like that. Honestly, my favorite is Scream, for sure. The first... Scream's incredible. Yes, absolutely. So the first one is the best, unquestionably. 
Yeah, it's it's a hard question to answer when you're a horror movie person. I feel like everyone has that one film, though. Yeah, I mean, it, you're right that it is hard. It's because there's a, there's different favorites that I have for different reasons, like fun horror movies, the legitimately scor- scary ones. Like Halloween Three Season of Witch isn't legitimately scary, but I just love it. Yeah. But then there's actual movies that will actually terrify me. So it really depends on what you you want to feel at that. Time. True. Very very true. Very true. So we'll go with the Halloween Three. Halloween Three Season of the Witch, the night. No one came home, and aren't you very curious as to why? <laughs> I love it. Are you from? I I heard you might be from Mississauga, Ontario. I want I'm to ask. Born in Mississauga. Yeah. Okay, so I am in Mississauga right now. Are you currently in Mississauga? I am. Saga. Yes, aka Toronto, because we just say it because nobody knows where Mississauga Toronto is. Toronto adjacent. Yeah, Toronto. Yes. Adjacent. So that is great to, it, it, I was going to ask you, like, how do you go from being from Mississauga to being such an incredible actor, getting these great <laughs> opportunities? Like, how do you do it? I don't know. I never really lived in Mississauga was the thing. My parents were working on a, I believe, a TV show in Toronto at the time. So I was born in the Mississauga hospital. But Got I it. I don't think I ever lived in Mississauga. I lived a little bit in Barrie. So that's an even better question. How do you go from Barrie? <laughs> I, yeah, right? Wow, I know. Which I also love, I love Barry. Uh, but I, I grew up a little bit in Ithaca, New York, and upstate. And I, I, I really was raised in Vancouver, which is where I'm sitting now. Got it. And uh, I was raised here from the time I was about, I'd say, three or four. Cool. So you've kind of kind of been around, but you're you're Canadian. I am Canadian. I'm dual citizen, actually. Now you're do- cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. And I know there's a lot of filming in Vancouver as well. So... <laughs> Yes, so that makes sense. We're very, very lucky over here that most of the time I just get to, I I shoot all over, but a lot of the time I get to stay right here in my own backyard, which is lovely. That's amazing. To circle back to uh, supernatural thriller movies, you're in I Still See You, which I absolutely love that film. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really did. And I thought that it's such an interesting contrast and idea, um, this idea of the the remnant yeah and that line do you as a horror movie lover do you believe there could be a little fine line between ghosts and the living yeah i believe that to be so i believe i mean yeah i don't know if what i would believe in is called ghosts maybe i do though i believe that you know energy and the spirit never completely dies so i think there's there's um there must be some remnant as they say in the movie there must be some form of remnant to to that i don't i wouldn't be i'm not the person to to know exactly how or why but yeah i believe there's probably a finer line than we think cool yeah i really liked how that kind of played out in the movie really really well done i'm really Um, happy you did oh thank you yeah yeah no it was great um i wanted to watch it too before chatting with you you know i like to get an idea who i'm talking to and uh research really really great project now what is next for you is there anything that you haven't done that you'd like to do are there any projects on the horizon that we should know about absolutely there's a very big one for me that i'm very 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 proud of it's a tv show for netflix and cbc gem it's a co-production between the two of them Uh, it's called fakes and it is something that i'm very 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 excited for and it comes out early fall i don't think i can say the date but it comes out very early fall, so it's coming out very soon. And it's about uh, two young high school girls that get into making fake identification for their friends uh, to make some money before college. And then within the year or two years of that, they accidentally create one of the top five largest fake identification syndicates in all of North America. And it's partly tr- a true story. And my character is like the idiot drug dealer at the school that uh, they rope into helping uh, expand the business. And I accidentally, I think, get them involved in stuff that is a little bit over their head. It's a ton cool. of fun. It's a dark comedy, and it's something that I'm so, so proud of. And we have such great young actors on it. They're they're incredible, and I can't wait for everyone to see the the skills of the people that they they hired in those in those roles. That's amazing. And it, you said it's a TV series. It's a TV series for Netflix, yeah, and just CBC. Perfect, perfect. I will be sure to check that out. I'm sure that. Fans are going to love it. Now, last question is, do you have any goals for yourself for the future? Could be 
personal or it could be create c- career related. Personally, I would love to break 80 in golf. Okay, you're a golfer. I'm a big golfer, but I'm uh, evidently not a very good one. Okay. But I do love it and I do golf a lot. For the job, it remains the same that it's always been. I would like to work constantly until the day that I die. And that would make me wildly happy and content. That's amazing. Well, I hope that you continue to, and I'm sure you will. I would love Thank to you. see you in like a slasher horror. So I'd like to get back that. into the horror. It's been a little bit since I've done a horror and I would really love to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you'd be fantastic for that. So not the face for it. <laughs> No, you're you're you've got the skill. You've got and you got the passion, so you are you are totally good there. Appreciate that. Amazing. Well, it was so wonderful talking to you. It was wonderful talking to you. I look forward to seeing what you do next. Great. And remain Mississauga proud. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you have a good day. Thank you.